Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we're going to talk about fonts and ebooks, what you need to know for producing your ebooks with custom fonts. So thanks for checking out this video. I am Tom Morosky. I'm an author and a technology consultant. And here on this channel, we will teach you how to take your manuscript and format it in all of the various ways professionally to get it uploaded onto whatever services you're using to get your books out to the public. And if you've not already subscribed to the channel and turned on that notification, please do that. Give us a like and a comment down there if this video was helpful. And so uh, what about fonts and eBooks? Now, I already did a video about general font licensing, so go ahead and have a look at that video for a summary of fonts invo involved in the whole thing. But uh, what we wanna do is we're gonna look at a couple points. So we're gonna do some here on the camera and then we're gonna jump over to the computer for the more technical part, putting those fonts in. So first, we wanna talk about licensing. So in font licensing for eBooks, you'll remember that there are different licenses for fonts. What you need specifically is an eBook or a digital license. Depending on where you're buying your fonts, you will have one of those. So there's desktop licenses, you'll remember. There's, um, there are uh, digital licenses, eBook licenses. There's now app licenses. You have to be aware if you are using a commercial font where this font can be used. You can't buy a desktop font and then put that font custom in an ebook as an embedded file. You are breaking copyright and you could be sued. Now, I like to use Font Spring when I'm buying my fonts, and I have an affiliate program for that. And the reason I use the affiliates for them is they are absolutely amazing about answering questions. They have the, some of the best selection of fonts and some of the best prices. And also, if you need multiple font licenses for the same font, you can usually add, if you buy the desktop license, you can usually get a, a digital or an ebook license, an app license, or whatever for a fraction of the cost as an add-on. So that's why I like that. Now, I also use for free fonts, I like using Font Squirrel is the best place to get free fonts. Only one I know of that's really good, has a high reputation without doubt downloading a lot of spam and junk and viruses along the way. So Font Squirrel is an excellent place to go. And on that, you need to go ahead and have a look at the font license tag on any free fonts you get over there. Most of them can be used in a commercial way embedded in an ebook, but some of them can't. So you have to look at that font license and read it and understand what you're doing. I have had to leave behind some fonts that I thought would be really cool because the licensing just did not allow for it. So that's your thought about licensing. Second, let's talk about support. Not all e-readers are going to support your custom fonts. Now your higher end ones will. So your, your i, um, iBooks applications, so that's on your iPhone, on your iPad, and on your Mac computer has the iBook built in. That is a very good, very premium uh, ebook reader. And so that one I have found on the, whether it's the phone or the tablets or the computers, always supports the custom fonts inside of an ebook. So you don't have any issues with that. Last I knew, I believe Kindle also fully supports custom fonts inside of there. I'm not 100% sure about that, uh, but I'm pretty sure it does. Kobu, I assume it does, but I have not actually had a chance to test my ebooks on Kobu. Now, as far as in the free and open source world, for me, um, I use FB Reader a lot, which has, sometimes it doesn't actually have good support. It depends if you're getting a version from the Google Play Store for an Android tablet or, or phone, or if you're getting a free and open source one from something like F-Droid. Um, I found that sometimes it will support custom fonts, sometimes it will not, so that one's kind of hit and miss. Uh, Bookworm on Linux, and I'm not sure if that is for other platforms as well, that tends to support, I believe that one supports all your different custom fonts. So you're gonna have some ins and outs. The reason this is important is make sure that your custom fonts are not used in critical ways in your ebook. You wanna use them to draw attention to things like uh, titles, or in my case on uh, this book here, Happy Holidays, we used it to indicate block quotes. We quote extensively since it's on the foundation of the country. We quote extensively from, from founding father documents uh, as they related to holidays and, and other quotes and things 
things. And we also, myself and my other co-author, we also did our brief snippets and impressions of the holidays at the beginning. We use custom fonts for all those. And if it, we don't get the custom font rendered, it's not the end of the world. It does add some really nice appeal though to the book. Also through your titles and uh, sections and subsections, we're using custom fonts over there. Now, uh, that's all about the support and the licensing. We're gonna jump on over to the computer where we're gonna look at, uh, we're just gonna download some fonts. We're gonna talk about how to import them into the document using Sigil. We're gonna look at setting up the CSS or the style sheets for it and how to actually use the fonts in the book. So we'll head on over to the computer for the rest. Okay, so here we are over on the computer. So the first thing we wanna do is let's go up and have a look at our websites. We mentioned FontSpring. There is an affiliate link for FontSpring down here. And uh, what we find down here in FontSpring is uh, you can search for any variety of fonts that we have. And you can see over here the pricings. So $35, uh, $29. And what you're gonna wanna see though is you're going to wanna see your licensing. What is What are you getting for that? So you can sort by you know display, script, slab, sans, serif. There's more options. Right on their homepage though, they have a statement here indicating uh, that not all font licenses are uh, made easy. And these guys are very good about about answering questions if you have as well. And so, of course, you can send me an email at my contact form, writingdonewrite.net forward slash contact if you want, or you can reach out to them. And uh, the fact that they answered back very quickly, they have amazing prices on their fonts, their uh, experience using them is very good. That's actually why I have them as an affiliate uh, as well. But here you can see what the desktop font is, where you can use it. Uh, we have ebook fonts, applications, web fonts. So I think the applications might be a new one. One of the font type of licenses is actually new. Now, what you get with FontSpring is when you go to download an individual font, then uh, you can see which font license it is, and oftentimes you can get an add-on. So if I'm doing a desktop font because I need it for a, a license anyway, and then I want to go down and embed it at an ebook file as well, you might be able to add on the ebook license for just an extra couple dollars. Now, when I'm looking for fonts, though, I like going over to Font Squirrel first. And uh, this company here is a place where you can grab a lot of fonts. Now, they have two forms of fonts. They have on-site and off-site fonts. So you can see down here, local only, off-site only. So by default, you're searching both. If you hit local only, everything here are free fonts. Now, just because they're free does not mean they have a full license to be used everywhere. You always want to go ahead and use the fonts. Uh, you want to use your fonts in, in such a way, find out what the licensing is. So for example, the font that I'm using here for Synaptrogy is BioRime is the font that I'm using in the title. So I'm going to use the section, um, the section numbers used for these guys here. And so on this font, if you head on over to the license section, you can see what the font licensing is. So if I see the SIL open font license, this is pretty much permission to use it for any book that you're going to do, ebook, distribution, things like this. I believe I might have actually covered the details of this specific font license in my other uh, other videos about it. Uh, they do have a lot of things. Uh, basically, you can't take this font and sell it individually, but you can embed it in an ebook to use. You can embed it in a web application because of the type of font license. I'm going to go ahead and download a copy just to make sure that I have a copy of the font laying around over here. And uh, <clears throat> so here it is, and inside of my downloads, see I download a lot of different uh, a lot of different fonts here. Let's just go ahead and drop this guy onto the desktop. Over to the desktop, here it is. So let's just go ahead and extract this onto the desktop. I'll clean it up later after the uh, video's over. All right, that'll just make a mess on my desktop there. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is how do we actually use these fonts in an ebook? You can see where there's all those fonts there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up the book that I'm going to use. So this is Synaptrogy, and I broke this down based upon the header one tags. So part one is uh, part one of the book, part two of the book, part three of the book, and you'll notice that I put these in an H1 tag. I went ahead and cleaned up all the excess code that was coming from the LibreOffice document here. 
And when I'm actually going to finally produce this, I'm actually going to take all these chapter numbers and put them as an H2 so I can style those ones differently as well. But for the purpose of our example here, all we want to do is show you how to add a font, how to um, use it in a style sheet, and how to actually apply it. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to add a file. So if we hit, uh, go down to your fonts section down here and uh, right click and add existing files. Now we can go ahead and find the font that we want. So do we want to use the light, the regular, the bold? Uh, let's just, uh, let's actually just use the regular in this case. I'll make this final decision if I want to use light, regular, or bolds when I do the final book uh, at another time. But for now, for the case of our examples here, we're just going to go ahead and uh, embed it here. So now you can see I have this bio rhythm regular font here. If I'm going to go ahead and rename, I'm not going to actually rename it, I'm just going to do that so I can copy it because I'm going to want to do that, uh, use the copy. Now what we're going to do is open up your style sheet. And what you need to do to use a font in an ebook is you want to use the CSS style, which is at font dash face. So at font face, and then we have to tell the system where to find this font at. So we're going to use uh, SRC. I'm trying to work around my microphones in my the way here. So, all right, SRC colon. So this is telling you the source of the file. And what we're going to do is URL parenthesis, and then we're going to reference the location where it is. So we're, we're in a file inside the, the style. So we need to go up to the main root. So dot dot slash goes up to the main root. And then we got, need to go down to the directory, which is called fonts with a capital S, F, just because of what we see here. And then we're going to use the name of the font. So biorhythm dash regular dot O T F. Now you might have a T T F. You might have uh, is it W O L F? I think it might be a wolf or something. It's something similar to that. Uh, whatever that would happen to be. We're going to close our parenthesis and a semicolon. If you don't use the semicolon, you're going to get messed up uh, somewhere here. And now we actually just need to give it a name that we are going to use throughout the document. This could literally be anything, but what we're actually just going to do is just use biorhythm regular. Put that in a single quote like that. Close our tag, and then we're going to use our close curly bracket. Now, the only place where we're actually going to want this to appear is our uh, header once. Now, this is an older version of Sigil here. I showed you the newer versions where you have the, the separate book viewers. This one actually has your book viewer built right in here. So what we're going to be looking at here is this guy, uh, this guy right here. So if we go into our style sheet now, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this for our H1. So our H1 tag, open up a curly bracket, and now what we're going to do is simply do font family, and then just give it the same name that we gave it up above. Now, if I wanted to drop down the size, I could do something with that. Let's go ahead and save that file. Now, when I come back, you'll see that we are using a font. Now, one of the comments that I made uh, on doing the original Synaptergy book cover, some people really like this only capitals. And for a, a part, a section part, then we might actually want to do that. So if I wanted to do something like that, I'm going to use the text dash transform colon, and I'm going to use uppercase, and this will tell it to only use uppercase files instead. So now it's going to be uppercase. So now the start on all of these guys are all uppercase using our custom fonts. So that's all there is to it. Uh, step one is find your font. Step two, double check your font license. Of course, if you've purchased your font from FontSpring using my affiliate, that's a great way to help the channel. But make sure as long as they give you what's called an ebook license, you can go ahead and embed this, that font in your ebook like this. And then just go right on down to your fonts, add it to your folder, add it to your style sheet and anywhere where you want that. So if I actually wanted to use that font through the whole thing, I could actually do that like this. Uh, let's just go ahead and change this to a P tag. But if I'm doing a paragraph, I probably don't want a text transform uppercase. Go ahead and do that. You can see now the whole book's written like this. I will very much caution you though, do not use custom fonts inside of uh, the main body of your text. At most, you should use it for black quotes and things. Uh, definitely using it for uh, chapter section headers, uh, maybe block quotes, but using a custom font like this will give 
some unpredictable responses. Just to show you, that's how you would do it if you happen to want to. All right, so uh, that is uh, what it takes to get that done. You can see that's nice and easy. Of course, here using Sigil. And if uh, now we just kind of save our whole ebook here. And uh, when that's all saved up, now I can use this ebook and open it up with any ebook reader. And I'm not even sure I actually have another ebook reader on this computer. Let's go ahead and see. I have Document Viewer. Document Viewer can read ebooks. So here you go. Here's our here's our ebook. Make it a little bit smaller so it's a little easier to easier to, to read like a book. All right, so there we are. Uh, there's uh, there's how we how we make that happen. All right, so uh, let me know if this was helpful in the comments down below. Head on over to the website at writingdoneright.net if you want to find out more information. I have a little bit of tutorials typed out on uh, on the various posts over there. Uh, you can help support the channel. Definitely subscribe if you have not already. Comment. Uh, that lets me know what, uh, what types of things you guys like to see. And uh, I hope that we have taught you how to get your writing done.